So if you were to look at my electrical engineering resume, you'll see it's quite stacked. I have a PhD in electrical engineering. I've done two internships at NASA. I did a research internship at MIT. I worked at other companies such as Northrop Grumman, TTM Technologies. I'm also a teaching professor at Xavier University. And I've published over 13 peer-reviewed papers in IEEE conferences. And I say that not to brag, but there's a really good reason why I have stacked up my resume so much in the past few years. And the reason is actually surprising because most people will build up their resume and will, they will stack it in hopes of getting a job at like a top company like Microsoft. Microsoft or Google or whatever, but I don't care about any of that. I'm actually most likely going to be building my own company anyway. So there's no real reason to build a resume. And especially me as a person, I don't really care much for big names. I mean, I live only 10 minutes away from Harvard and I barely go there, but there's one reason why I like going to top institutions and working at top institutions, at least in the initial stage of my career. And that is a very simple reason. And I came across this reason when I was an undergrad, because when I was an undergrad, I joined a CubeSat laboratory. It was basically a lab of a bunch of undergrad students that were building a satellite, a small satellite from scratch. Needless to say, these kids were very smart and I wanted to be around them. I wanted to learn from them. So I literally just went in as a volunteer and I said, hey, I'm free labor. I just want to help. And I started working on like some circuit designs and they would basically assign me some like small tasks. And then I spent a few months there and I started working my way up. And then eventually I was leading the communication subsystem for the entire CubeSat. Now, most of my learning didn't actually come from the fact that I was learning, like working on these high tech things. It was just by sitting and being around these smart people. I was essentially hanging out with the most talented and the smartest people in my university, especially within engineering. And that was extremely valuable. And then a few summers later, I spent an entire summer at Caltech, California Institute of Technology. And I lived there. I lived with the engineering students and the physics students. And again, I spent three months there. And just by being around these people, I absorbed so much knowledge and so many ideas and ways of making decisions that would like blow my mind. And when I did my internship at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, I interviewed around 30 engineers. And I literally just asked them career advice, how to be productive, how to make decisions. If you were me, what would you do? I tried to absorb as much from their brain as possible because by that time I had already known the value of being around smart, talented engineers. So everything I tell you on these YouTube videos is not just me making up stuff from my own mind. It's basically me and everything I have learned from my experiences, all these NASA engineers, Caltech students, the other students I work with, the MIT engineers I worked with, basically anybody I've ever interfaced with that taught me something, I adopt that and that becomes part of how I think and process information. And then it becomes part of how I think and give you advice in return. And this is honestly the main reason why I make these YouTube videos because I feel like I have learned so much from the smartest and most talented people that's my responsibility to share it with other people. So if I have one advice for you regarding a resume is you want your resume to be as stacked as possible, not so you can be impressive to companies, but because you want to go and attract the most talented people and work with them. And if you were to ever go to a top level institution, you would only do that for the purpose of being around smart and talented people. Now the way to build your resume is just be really good at what you do, stack your skills, join clubs, join projects, see if there's any other people that you could work with and then work your way up and then try to get that first golden opportunity, whether it be an internship, a project, or anything that, again, gets you to be hanging out with other smart, talented engineers. And again, with time, once you hang out with a lot of these talented people, you're going to realize that what everything really comes down to is just how you make decisions. Like the single unit of experiencing life is the decisions we make and the thoughts we have that make the decisions that lead to the actions that basically end up determining the outcomes we have in our lives. Lately, I've been writing a lot about this on my Twitter account. Uh, if you use Twitter, you should follow me. It's at Ali the Dazzling. Uh, it's pretty much the only social media I use, and I like it because it's about ideas and I get to document my thought process. So if you were to go check out my tweets, you'll probably see how my thought process is evolving and maybe you could learn something from it as well. Now I did make a separate video recently on how I make decisions and how I made the decision to go to my NASA internship. Again, based on everything I've learned, it should show up somewhere over here. So you should go ahead and watch it. Peace, love.